And, uh, and uh, Linda, Charlie, and it's good to see so many friends uh, here today, uh, Dinesh, Brian. Uh, so I've been asked to just speak about the split uh, liver transplantation in reference to transplantation in children. And it has been a never-ending challenge, really, the, the meeting the pediatric demand in, uh, in the past. It is uh, uh, better nowadays. <coughs> But in the past, in the late 80s, uh, or in the mid 80s, so, and, and up to the early 90s, size match uh, was a huge problem because to change livers of this, uh, of this size was really almost impossible. This is a neonatal, neonatal liver. And uh, obviously, pediatric, and fortunately, small size uh, is pediatric uh, donors are scarce as a scarce resource, and we would not want it differently. And uh, it was very difficult to find uh, adequate grafts for, for small size transplant recipients. So these recipients had to wait a very long time, uh, which means being then transplanted, if they got to transplant, in, uh, with a worsening condition, and certainly that would impact also on the results. I have to say that liver transplantation has been really the field of excellence for the development uh, of uh, technical uh, uh, for new techniques uh, and alternative techniques, and um, particularly in the field of pediatric transplantation. And uh, remember that end-stage uh, liver disease is not like end-stage kidney disease. There's no dialysis for the liver, so you've got limited time, and uh, you cannot keep patients alive uh, uh, for a long time whilst we're waiting for an organ. And particularly in pediatric transplantation, the, the greatest demand is really in the smallest children, so in those uh, less than three years of age. The important thing to understand for, for talking about splits is that liver is a segmented organ, and it is possible to cut part of it and to uh, tailor the organ size to the recipient size. These are the segments of the liver. There are eight of them, and uh, there's a guy, Quanod, who looked at the uh, segmentation of the liver. This depends really from the blood vessels that go inside and come outside of the liver, actually more from those that go inside. And the, the numbers given were really uh, very much in, uh, with a similarity, and probably they come from that, from the uh, um, division of areas of Paris, of the town. Uh, and this guy being French, obviously did it in that way. The, we can uh, reduce the liver. The first reduction was really done by Bismuth, who worked uh, uh, closely with uh, Quano, and, uh, and uh, he did the first reductions. Reductions were useful to try to uh, use adult livers to transplant smaller recipients and children. This is a right lobe reduction, not very efficient, and it's not really very much done. This is a left lobe reduction, so it's the left side of the liver, and uh, can, you can transplant uh, patients uh, uh, between 30 and, and 50 kilograms uh, with, uh, with left lobes. More interesting for really small children is uh, segments two and three, this left left side of the liver that uh, can allow us to uh, transplant uh, small children. So whilst Bismuth came up with reduction in 1984. Uh, Pickelmeyer came up with splitting in 1988. That was the concept was simple. You know, the, the pediatric recipient was the uh, main, uh, uh, let's say, uh, focus of, of uh, the uh, procedure, and uh, it was thought why to throw away the right lobe if uh, it is good quality and we can try to uh, transplant it as well. And uh, it's uh, split works well uh, with uh, a, very, very, a few other caveats. Donor selection, it's very important. It has to be really a nearly perfect liver to be, to be split. Uh, also, splitting is a, a fairly long procedure. It's done uh, uh, most of the times in this country ex uh, situ, ex situ, uh, on, on a bench. Uh, so there is a further prolonging what we call the, the cold storage time, the cold ischemia time of the liver. And very important, more for the right side than for the uh, child, it's recipient selection uh, in terms of volume, in terms of uh, 
clinical condition, and also in terms of uh, technical risk factors, whether there is a good anatomy for splitting or a bad anatomy for splitting. Uh, and very important is uh, surgical expertise. Um, so so the, this is the standard split, as, as we said, the left lateral segment for, for a child and the right side, either for a bigger child or a, um, um, or, uh, or an adult. You can see that uh, all, uh, both sides have got everything they need, a bile duct, uh, a portal vein, uh, an artery, and the drainage through the hepatic vein. So they, these are the things that each graft uh, needs to have. Uh, I'm sorry for this, but uh, for those that had breakfast and are non-medical, but uh, I could not refrain from doing that. And there have been further developments, uh, uh, like the inside to split, which does have some advantages, um, and is done directly in the donor. Uh, and, and also the split for other two adults or two, as we've done it uh, recently, in two adult-sized children, uh, where you, uh, with a little bit more uh, difficulty, you split the liver exactly, almost exactly, in two halves, uh, which, which uh, is something we, we kind of learned uh, from... Uh, the uh, living donor experience. And this is an example of uh, a half of a liver that doesn't, this is very odd because we've done it in a different way, the left side of the liver, and you would, it, the, the drainage for this side, it's, uh, the, the vein that drains this side has been left on the other side, and so we have to reconstruct the drainage with some, uh, with some vessels, sorry for this. In Birmingham we have a very active split program as uh, as uh, in Kings and uh, have, and uh, you can see in blue, the number of splits uh, started in uh, both centers around 92, 93, and then gradually increased uh, <coughs> over the years. Whereas we reduced the grafts have really come down. Uh, I was surprised to see these numbers, but these are mainly uh, uh, due to uh, uh, transplantation in fulminant uh, uh, patients uh, in patients that cannot really wait that long and uh, where the uh, uh, graft does not seem to be splittable in the middle without uh, causing too much uh, uh, running at greater risk. So these are the numbers in uh, Birmingham. Uh, uh, as you can see, the median waiting time for acute liver failure is five days and uh, two months for chronic liver disease. The median age of the donors is 25, so these are excellent uh, grafts. And, uh, but you can see in a, in a significant number, the donors were uh, more than 40 years of age. Uh, and that's usually for when you're, you're under pressure, either because you have a child that has fulminant liver fa acute liver failure and needs a transplant very quickly, so you would accept slightly older donor, but, uh, but a good quality donor. Or uh, there are children that have a very limited window, like children with, uh, with the tumors, like the hepatoblastoma, they have to have chemotherapy, and then they have a narrow window, and, uh, and uh, that's when uh, we would accept uh, um, patients, uh, uh, donors, sorry, donors uh, that are not ideal for, for splitting. Uh, the results uh, have been uh, very good for left lateral segments, uh, um, going into, for the small left part going into the child, the question is, do we split enough? Are we doing everything we can to, to split livers? And the use of, of splitting is, is, is fairly limited, and uh, it's, it's tailored to the pediatric need. It has to be said that once it was limited more by the number of children on the list, now it's more limited by the uh, number of uh, uh, adequate quality livers that can be split. The feasibility is thought to be around uh, 20 25 percent, uh, and uh, if you look at this data from the ELTR, the uh, registry in Europe of, uh, of donation and transplantations, uh, less than three percent of livers were split, which is a bit shocking if you, if you think that 25 percent would have been split. This is again uh, some variation in, in the splitting uh, percentages. A Euro transplant. Uh, had uh, changed allocation policy in 2003 and had a 67 increase of splitting in one year. Uh, however, in the subsequent years, we had a <coughs> reduction again because 
there was a difficult collaboration with the adult centers uh, and non-pediatric non centers. And the waiting list rose again by 20%. A few countries managed to, do, to, to make it right, uh, uh, and this has mainly been a result of setting a national split policy. So France, Italy, but more than others, UK have uh, really uh, uh, worked better in increasing the number of splits. Um, Although, and this has been because uh, we, we have to justify ourselves if we, if we don't split livers that are less than 40 years of age, and because there has been much greater collaboration between uh, uh, adult and pediatric centers. The, uh, in the last years, though, uh, looking at the UK transplant data, uh, again, the numbers of uh, splits have been coming down and uh, only 22 livers were split out of uh, uh, 109 livers that were within criteria. And this has been uh, really the lowest uh, utilization since uh, the national intention to split program, which was launched in 2004, as I said, uh, regarding the, the mainly livers that were less than 40 years of age. Partially, this is due to the fact that the donor characteristics have changed. And you can see over the years, uh, um, the age of the donors have uh, increased and uh, the kind of reasons why uh, or the cause of death of donors have uh, shifted a little bit with uh, more, slightly more CVAs and fortunately less traumas but the CVAs are uh, a disease of uh, cardiovascular accidents of, of older people and generally the, the donor has evolved into, into <laughs> what Professor Davidson was discussing earlier. And the, <laughs> and the, the uh, way we can, uh, or we are trying to, and again, Prof. Levison mentioned this, uh, uh, we can try to overcome this problem is uh, with living donation. And uh, this is the first ever living donor, in liver living donor, uh, live donor in the UK. It was uh, done uh, in uh, King's, uh, I was a registrar in 1994, it's Veronica Carolyn with their daughter Audrey, and uh, we did a pilot of five uh, pediatric uh, uh, living donors, which went well, and from there the live donor program uh, started. And you know, it remained fairly low in the UK, but now we're facing, particularly in our region, with uh, uh, um, deaths or patients coming out of the waiting list because they're too sick, up to 16%, and therefore. Uh, life donation has to come in to, uh, to uh, 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 try to address the problem. The last thing I'd say about uh, living donation, that for the left lateral segment uh, for children, it gives a very good quality graft, and uh, the uh, mortality in the donor is not the same as for when donors donate uh, right low grafts, which is uh, 1 in 200. So it's, it's lower and is comparable to the donation of, of uh, to a kidney, live donor uh, kidney donation. And, um, and um, there is also competition for the best grafts that should be split or should go to um, patients that are really sick on the list, adult patients that are really sick on the list. And we face this dilemma every day. Should we split this liver? We do have to try to split all livers less than 40 years of age. Uh, but that creates us problems in, in those patients that have, uh, are waiting for a retransplant, and not all retransplants are really suitable candidates for, for uh, right lung splits. So all these are, are big issues that uh, we face every day, and uh, live donation can, uh, 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 will not solve the problem, but will help with the problem, and I think uh, we need really, uh, NHSPT needs to improve even further. Let's put it like that. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks.